Welcome back guys, this is Joshua Lead and Iron and I have a pretty cool video and it's just kind of explaining some of the cables that I use, especially with my Mac Studio. If you're like me, you have like a gaming console plugged into your monitor, a PC, uh, I have a camera too if I stream from time to time. There are only so many HDMI ports in the back of my monitor then I may need to use something like this, which is an HDMI splitter, so HDMI 2.1 splitter. And what that does is gives me an extra HDMI port that is 2.1 on the back of my monitor. If I wanted to take full advantage of a Thunderbolt 4 to HDMI like this I have right here, I just bought this. What I'm going to do is I'm going to use this cord, plug the plug this end into my Thunderbolt 4 port in the back of my Mac Studio, and then use this splitter to plug in the HDMI 2.1 end. That way I'm able to use a frame rate, the higher frame rates, in my monitor from my Mac Studio. Now the only gripe I did have with my Mac Studio was the HDMI port is 2.0, so it's HDMI 2.0 which kind of limits it, the 4K, to 60 hertz, I think. And that was like the only gripe I had. It's a fantastic machine. It's been about a month. I've been daily driving this machine. I love it. You can get something like this, which is an active adapter. So what it is, is this end is DisplayPort 1.4 to a HDMI 2.1. So this gives the same type of resolution if you wanted to use 2.1. So I can go that route as well. What I want to do is get away from the HDMI 2.1 and that is the reason I got the Thunderbolt Type 4 to HDMI 2.1. I want to use my 4K monitor with the higher frame rates and not be limited to 60 Hertz. Now there's an other way like using a dongle but I kind of want to get away from the dongle life that we've had especially with my M1 Mac book pro i've had to carry this dongle with me everywhere i've gone and that is only because they gave me two thunderbolt 4 ports and i needed you know usb type a or usb 3.0 or sd card reader all that stuff is on my mac studio so i i would really not want to use this i can also if i wanted to connect this to my pc and then use the active adapter that way, at least that way I would get full range. It's little things like that that kind of make the big difference. And I think knowing that you do have to have an active adapter converter. So if you're trying to convert DisplayPort to HDMI, DisplayPort 1.4 to HDMI 2.1, it is what is called an active adapter. And that's really important to know. So when you're ordering this from Amazon or wherever, you'll have the correct product you need to get the results you want. I will link an active adapter in the description below i'll also link this thunderbolt 4 to hdmi 2.1 in the in the in this exact one in the description below as well if you want to go the dongle way i will also put a link to something similar to this because i don't think they have these anymore and also the hdmi splitter i uh, will link all those in the description this way you kind of have a better idea of what you're looking for especially if you want to get away from that hdmi 2.1 not sure why they put that in you know like the higher not necessarily like highest tier but like a higher tier machine i think it was kind of like a oof that probably shouldn't have happened but that's what we're with yeah there are ways around it and you're able to utilize the Thunderbolt 4 on the back of your Mac Studio, even if it's the base model, and get HDMI 2.1 to your monitor. I know sometimes those higher frame rates make a big difference. And I, yeah, I can see it on my cell phone, I can see it when I play games. You're better able to configure the monitor to your liking and not being restrained to 60 hertz or you know, maybe not necessarily you're not getting 4K or for whatever reason, this will help you set your monitor up and your device up to your liking. And I think that's that's going to be a game changer for a lot of us. Anyway, guys, let me know if, if information like this is important. If you want more information like this, like I did say, I will go ahead and link all these in the description. Let me know if there's any workarounds that you guys have done with your Mac Studio and maybe you didn't get the studio display because $1,600 is a pretty steep price, especially if it's not moving up and down. 
I did opt not to get the display just because one, it was a lot of money and two, I have some pretty good monitors right now that I like. I do, you know, sometimes PC game and I do also, you know, console game. And I, I couldn't see myself going to 60 Hertz again when I've been so used to 144 or 240 and I just couldn't do it. <laughs> so, so I had to find a way to be able to get those refresh rates without having to change my monitor. I think a lot of us are in that boat because other than, you know, whether you're coding or, you know, editing, do, creating music, I think that you don't want to be hindered and or have to change your monitor every time you want to do something else i think most people including myself buy the monitor that works best for their all around work and play because you're going to use this when you're not working i think that most of us buy what we need and also want at the same time and i think that having 5k would be great but 60 hertz is just not something i want to go back to so let me know in the in the comments below if that's something that you don't want to go back to either let me know what else you guys want to see in these videos especially if it's concerning you know the mac studio i will also point out that most of these adapters and cord were no more than 30 dollars. so this way you're able to kind of save some money and not have to feel that you have to spend the 1600 dollars to get full full range of your monitor Anyway, guys, I got to go. I have a puppy that uh, wanting attention. He's a good boy. And also because my back hurts. Anyway, guys, I'll talk to you guys later.